Hello and welcome to Clanny Casting. Um, we are going to have a game here between Mana and Tefl. Casting are Dagor and Traffic. So, Hello, I'm Traffic from Polygon Gaming and I am a Zerg and Terran player. And Looks like we have a great game here on Prion Ter Terraces. So, in our top left hand corner, we have in the teal our Zerg player, Tefl. And in the bottom right, one of Poland's great players, it's Liquid Mana. And you do this. You do the intro so much better than me. So we're going to see quite an interesting game, we should anyway, because Mana is, as you said, a very well known, quite popular player with a lot of a lot of weight to his name. Yeah, I think Mana is one of those players that has a lot of different tools in his tool chest, and he can basically do almost anything. Yeah. Now, Tefl not completely unknown himself, and quite experienced against Mana on the ladder, a lot of uh, online tournament games too. And we see Mana with a pylon block at Tefl's natural. Yeah, that's really painful for Teffel here. We'll see if he goes and tries to get his third base down or how he's going to deal with this, but he's already moving up towards 400 minerals. Yeah, so he has the early pool down, and we see a third drone now heading out towards, I would assume, the knack, the gold base at his third. Yep. Yeah, so that's going these, now. these drones just picking away at the pylon, and Mana pokes up in to see the gas. So he knows that he's probably going to be playing against a speed opening. Yeah, but in the meantime, Mana has this wall at his natural now, and this with the natural coming up behind it now, this is quite powerful considering Tefl's current position. Yeah, Mana is golden. He has his natural on the way. He's opened up standard with the gateway into Cybercore and Second Gas. And so he can pretty much play this any way he wants. He can do a strong two base timing target away this uh, natural base which is quite far away or he could just play a macro game it's really up to him yeah so we see Tefl now has three bases down um, doesn't have speed on the way yet doesn't quite have the gas for it but he does have a queen out so maybe stabilizing a little bit we see Tefl we see mana though with a we have work gate and a chrono boosted stalker coming out he's try probably trying to get rid of that overlord yeah, let's see what he follows up with after the Stalker, because he has delayed his tech a little bit here to get that Stalker out, and it looks like it is going to be a Twilight Council, so we'll, we'll see what he uses that for as he pushes away this Overlord. Well, now, I'm kind of looking at this. I'm seeing double gas in the, knack, in the main with this Twilight, very fast Twilight coming down. Do you think this could be DT? Yeah, or maybe. I mean Protoss has so many options these days, it's kind of uh, one of the things with oh, well, there it is, you called it. Yeah, no, I mean, like, this this early gas in the main, especially with this many minerals coming in from a gold base, it's, it's DT or Stargate, really. It's quite often an Oracle, but it seems Mana prefers his Dark Templar, so we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, indeed, let's see um, how much damage these, these, these DTs can get done. Um... We do have the bases starting to be connected with creep, so that will help uh, in terms of moving his units around, but will he get yeah. the speed out in time is the real question here. Yeah, he has the Roach Warren coming down, but what he really needs is detection, so at this stage now he needs Spore Crawlers, but he has absolutely no map presence. Well, he has these Zerglings chasing a pro, but he needs to see into the base. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, he hasn't seen anything, so let's see what these Zerglings can get done. He's going to poke the front, sees the Mothership Core, sees some Adepts at the Gold, but so he yes. has no idea yet. Oh, there's this one yeah. down. So this is kind of a blind spore? Maybe he's just, he's just completely unsure what's happening, because he sees this third base coming down. He's seen the two Adepts, he's going to run up to the natural now. So he's probably not very sure what's going on, and maybe maybe he suspects something, maybe Oracle as or DT really, as I was saying. Yeah, I mean, oftentimes if you can't get a scout off, it's definitely, it's a good idea to make at least one or two blind spores, just because they're not the most expensive things, and they can defend against a lot of variety of play. They 
They help you against War Prisms, they help you against Dark Shrine. And you can even place them in the front of your creep to shoo away the Mothership Ooh. Gore. But there's the first okay. DT. Yeah, and that got pushed away quite effectively. There's already a Spore there, but there's no Spore in actual now. We have the DT coming into the main. It's completely undefended in terms of detection anyway. Yeah, and another DT at the third base. Let's see what these guys can get done. Going into the main, the drone's running away. And that Spore is going down. That's not going to get finished. So this is quite painful. Yeah, look, all the mining time already lost in the main. And that DT from the third has gone into the natural, and he's he's not pressing it though. If he pressed that, he could get a lot of damage done at that natural. Yeah, he saved one of the DTs, so that was good, but only five drones or five units gone down so far. So, but not the most point successful out, DT opening. Yeah, so... Well, Tefl is four drones behind, but he does have this 40 army supply lead, and that is quite a large army now. He has an Overseer as well to protect against Dark Templar, so he could take this turret down now. I'd be surprised if he did. Yeah, it looks like he wants to see what he can get done with these units that he made now that he's made them. There's the overcharge going off. Forcing out an overcharge. And um, so we have a Robo Bay follow up now from Mana actually. And we still know Forge, like so. He's using the Roaches to take out those Adepts, and now he's gonna take down the Pylons, and now that there's no Pylons, the base is going down, no Pylons, no base bait! Yeah, so that's the third, but he didn't lose many probes of that. Holy still shit, pulled... he pulled the Queens! Mmm, this is this is this seems very all in actually all of a sudden. Oh good force fields, those siblings aren't gonna be able to do much. Um, not very much. Now this is just a massive amount of units piling in from Heffel. I'm not sure it's going to get much done though. This pylon is going to go down, but there's a, still a few force fields. Good amount of stalkers and an immortal. He's going to be hard pressed to break this. Mana showing his experience under pressure. He's not going to die just yet. Excellent force fields on the ramp and using the overcharge to get to kill a lot of those units, trapping them in. Yeah, so we see Disruptors on the way now as well, so if uh, those Force Fields trap those Roaches on the ramp with Disruptor shots, that is painful. That is very painful. Yeah, but even so, I'm starting to become worried for Mana here because um, he's uh, he's on two bases, he's not mined out just yet, but he has no third while the Zerg player is mining from three bases comfortably, even two gold bases. Indeed, uh, especially on Prion, those two gold bases, that makes all the difference. I think, and he has 10, 11 Hydras on the way, he has plus one range, and... Check out these man. stalkers, man! Oh! This is, this is quite a good counteracting. Army for Tefl is totally out of position. Yeah, Tefl, I have no idea, and, and why would he think this? Blink is pretty uncommon in this matchup these days, and he stuck these stalkers around behind Tefl's vision, and he managed to snipe the base, and he's getting the recall! Brilliant play by Mana! That was amazing. That's third base down, 12 drones down. That is army completely pulled back. That is exactly what he needed. And he has two disruptors out now. So this is this is holdable if he wants to throw down the third again. I think he needed that as an equalizer. But at this Definitely. point, his army is looking scary. Hmm. So there is a massive army supply lead for Tefl, but uh, those disruptors can equalize things quite quickly. Yeah, we'll see how the control goes here. It looks like Tefl is still trying to be aggressive, but he needs to be careful because he doesn't want to. He needs to split against the disruptors. One disruptor shot can change a battle. Yeah, but he got the cancel there on the third again. So Mana needs this now. He he needs to get that third up. Taking in a lot of hydros with disruptors. Ooh, big hit. Yeah, uh, Zerg player spreading out his army. Uh, the force field's kind of working against Protoss in this case. We'll see when these Disruptors come back on. It looks like a few more seconds he needs. Uh, and they're back on, so now the Disruptors are out again. There's the dodging of the Disruptor. Nice dodge. Another one. Waste that one too. Only gets a Creep Tumor for it. Yeah, so he's got four out now. He has two left in reserve. I feel like the Zerg player can't quite attack into this yet. The army supplies are quite equal. But um, the longer you keep this turret base down, the better, really. Yeah, I feel like he needed to send these queens back. Uh, he has these full energy queens kind of acting as part of his army here, and I don't know if that queens are necessarily the best fighting units. Indeed. It's great that he has the creep spread out here, but I mean, he, he's, he's lost like three or four queens in the front lines at this point. 
Yeah, so he does have a fourth base and a lurker then coming down there. So this this can get quite out of hand if uh, Mana doesn't start getting maybe some damage done. Well, Mana has a Disruptor, so it's going to be an interesting dynamic between the Disruptors and the Lurkers. Yeah, but it feels... I always feel like Disruptor can be uh, pushed back quite hard by the rest of the army. If you're trying to focus the army of Disruptors, it, the Lurkers get out of hand and vice versa. So it's it's quite hard to manage it until you get a very large Disruptor count. Yeah, his Lurker Den is, is still about 30 seconds away. Um, so he's kind of in a transitional period here, and it looks like Mana's taking this opportunity to push the creep back for the first time in this game. Yeah, which he really needs to do now. That that creep spread, it's quite uh, shallow. There's only one, one tumor at each point, but it is quite far down the map, so that needs to go back. Yeah, do, do you think that Mana should wait for his worker dead to finish before he takes any more engages? You mean definitely? I mean, um, not, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think so, but he needs to pressure the army. If he lets the army just walk up on him, he's in trouble. Okay. Let's see if he works any workers. His worker jet just finished. No workers yet. So the only issue I can see now is that Devil is mining comfortably on four bases. Both players' uh, mains are mining out now, and the Naxals are mining out as well, so... It's going to get quite hard for Mana, unless he can get this fourth base down, which he looks like he wants to do. Yeah, this game has been a total slugfest here. We got uh, only 46 six and 47 drones respectively for our two players. But like you said, Teppel is mining off that fourth base, and that means that he has mined more minerals in this game. Yeah, we have this fourth base coming down for Mana now. We have a second Robo. Two, uh, plus two attack for both sides. Yeah, it's interesting. We have this spire coming down. What do you think of the spire? Oh wait, never mind. We have an attack on the fort. Yes, we do. And it looks like Mana using the, the disruptors to zone uh, Tefl out. So, so we have I don't base trade. He, yeah, yeah. he has Tefl. five workers set up. Well, yeah, we have the fort gone down for Tefl, but we have this army coming in for the third of Mana. And the recall. Oh, recall. This could be exactly what he needs. Disruptor shots. Tefl focusing Ooh. down the disruptors, disruptors left in the front. Still though, I don't think he can tackle this round. There's a lot of force fields left. There's guardian shield, so he has to pull back. So that worked out quite well for Mana. He's making quite good use of recall in this game. Yeah, Mana lost three disruptors, but uh, he also saved his gold base. He has a fourth base coming up, and his army is, is starting to look really, really badass. We have eight, nine lurkers coming now though. This is quite powerful. If Man is in a lot of trouble though with these nine lurkers. He doesn't have a lot of detection. Actually, does he have any detection? He has one observer on the map. That is not enough against this composition. Yeah, it seems like he's using all of his robo time to desperately get out as many immortals and disruptors as he can. But he better make sure he doesn't lose his observer, because there yeah, are but... some overseers in the Zerg army. I mean, he can use Disruptors to blind hit Lurkers, which maybe is what he's banking on, but the rest of his army just can't engage into this. He has to hold the Zerg back. Tefl sending his whole army back to deal with just three Zealots. I'm starting to get really worried that he has no fourth base even started yet, and he has no minerals. He is very broke at the moment. This is starting to get very dire for him, for Tefl. Maybe we're still... He's still 40 supply... Well, 33 supply ahead, so, I mean... He does have a powerful army. Oh, he's lost. Oh, he lost a lot of lurkers. Yeah, so a lot of lurkers. Throw a couple of them there. Okay, but still, those lurkers are alone in the middle of the map. That's not a good place for them against this army. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I feel like Tefl is spreading himself out a little bit too thin here. His his lurkers are are fighting separately from his army. But we have this mm, attack here on the third. Well, Huge fourth. disruptor hits. Whoa. Indeed, and he still has a few of those disruptors left, I think. But, yeah, there's uh, another one. Ooh, Tefl. Wow. And the GG, the three or four disruptor hits in a row, just absolutely massive hits, and Tefl has no economy left behind us to remake that army. Well, that's that. It was quite a close game there, but I feel Mana did have some very good aggression in getting those, that fourth, keeping the third down. Uh, the recall use was quite interesting. Yeah, an absolute slugfest between these two. Tefl staying on mm. layer attack and pumping out tons of roaches and hydras and lurkers. And uh, Mana sticking with his robotech. Yeah, 
I feel like Mana could have been punished by a lot of by lack of detection, but those disruptor shots worked out for him in the end. So maybe it was a good idea to force that to rush them out. Yeah, they definitely did wonders for him in this game. But anyway, that's all from us here at Clanny Casting. So that's Mana versus Teffel. That's a win for Mana. Thank you for tuning in. Absolutely. Thank you all. If the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail. It's time to start using the right tool for the job. Introducing SC2ReplayStats.com. They have the best replay parser out there with thousands of uploads whose build orders and timings are stored to help you find out how you stack up against others in your division. Or if you're a data nerd like me, analyze your favorite pros games so you can be awesome too. After all, how do you think Crash Course got started? My favorite feature is hands down the training center. It's got all the most important statistics like when to get your third, how many drones to make, and even how badly you're missing in they explain key focus points individualized to your matches and play style that will help you get to that next level. For only $5 a month, SC2 Replay Stats is more than worth it. Go thank them for supporting esports by getting better today. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I really like making these videos for you, so please make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out.